look at what's happened in the um in, in the UK and how we've seen you know so many new companies offering um products and services that just didn't exist, right? I was traveling in Europe uh, last week and there were just so many more, more products that I could use. So the competition is good for consumers. I think in terms of a mention efficiency, when you think of the technology that banks will use to be able to validate their, their customers, um, uh, to, to, to save them time and money, that means the consumers will get access to products more quickly. I think you can tick efficiency. And social inclusion, I was, I was reading up on this this morning. Now you've got new companies in the UK offering mortgages that maybe people wouldn't have had access to before. Um, you're helping look across the portfolio of um, resources and their credit scores which again will give them access to products that previously financial institutions probably wouldn't touch them because they just couldn't see enough about them. So I'm, I'm very bullish that if it works in the UK, it will work in Brazil as in other countries. And this will be good for consumers and businesses and investors who are looking to find the next, the next big companies. So I think it's, it's a great opportunity. As we said, at the moment, Brazil is in the process of putting in the rails. So the rail, rails are being uh, laid and they're Brazil rails. So Brazil has an opportunity and is leveraging from all the lessons learned in the United Kingdom and all the lessons learned in Australia and all the lessons learned uh, in New Zealand to create the next best set of train tracks. And at the moment, the, all the banks are busy implementing all of the, uh, the different uh, stops and all the different uh, train stations and all the different infrastructure necessary to pave the way for this new data revolution. What gets built and what gets put on those trains well, that's up to the TPPs. And you can see some of the new uh, propositions that are being built in the UK. You can see exciting new mortgage lending products where they're using this new infrastructure, this new data driven infrastructure to build new services that didn't exist before. And uh, I will agree, Brazil is doing, is laying this new data infrastructure at a pace uh, that is unprecedented in terms of uh, global open banking programs. Uh, to go from zero to uh, a payments uh, ecosystem and a fully fledged data sharing ecosystem uh, in 12 months is uh, a very ambitious target. But so far, uh, the banks seem to be doing uh, quite well. I'd just like to call out that as of uh, literally 90 seconds ago, uh, Ban Rizal has certified that they are now uh, capable of sharing account information and account transaction information. And that was a key milestone that opened this morning for the banks to start proving that they can meet that milestone for phase two, which is account data sharing, and the banks are stepping up. So congratulations to uh, Ban Rizal being the first to uh, prove that they can safely share account information and account transaction information. So whilst there's been a delay to uh, phase three, I think everyone should remember just the huge amount of progress that Brazil is making and the continuous progress that Brazil is making in laying some very modern and some very, very capable uh, you know, railroads. And they are using very modern, very international uh, standards and they are the reference. Make no doubt about it, Brazil's new standards and Brazil's new infrastructure will be the reference implementation just like the next ecosystem that comes along should learn from everything that Brazil has done and how they've done it, because they really are an exemplar to the world, not only in terms of the standards, but also showing what can be achieved when an ecosystem and a country and a regulator puts their minds to it.